being put on medicine. Yes, sir. Okay? Those kids are being put on medicine. All right? When in a lot of cases, all those kids needed are, in fact, they're kids going through life. All right? And in some cases, all those kids needed was a good old-fashioned belt. <laughs> Remember, they said, spirit, 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 it just so happens that I do a lot of work with my police officers in the community. I do a lot of arrests on people, okay? Commit crimes in our community, all right? Now that I'm in the district, I see our kids on medicine. These kids want to kill. They want to kill. They want to kill. They spit on teachers. They bite teachers. They punch teachers. They turn over desks. Listen, I'm telling you, they turn over desks. They run out of classrooms, run up and down hallways. We see kids out of control. However, if we as a society does not get behind the scenes and start looking at the situation, okay, just like you said, we'll go to our graves and they'll, listen, I was so afraid a few days ago, not afraid for the kids or for myself, afraid that these kids will eventually have kids. Seriously. That's a problem that we have. Look at all the murders that we have in the city of Rochester. Look at the background for these kids. They get to a certain point, they don't graduate from school, and then they say, the parents are responsible to the 18, but the system says that they can drop out at 16. Yes. It's a mixed message. Seriously, it's a mixed message. So again, to the media, these are things that we have to address. We have to get deep into the background of it, okay, and address it as a community. And we can't do it alone, all right? And you know that we have a generation of teachers as well that don't understand the dynamics of what these kids are really going through. Now, being a mentor, being a mentor, and running a program with 147 students involved in my program, and knowing that some kids that have come to me that were previously on medication, and I tell those parents that child does not need medication, but the teachers are continuously pushing it, those kids are fine. So again, we have to look at the root of the situation. So thank you for being here, but again, without your help, we're not going to get anywhere. All right, so thank you. Well, as usual, I'm, I'm uh, moving outside of the guidelines. I apologize. I wasn't going to say anything, but I just thought that I, I really needed to mention this. Um, and I just want to say thank you all so much. Uh, we put this together for, for this time. And thank you all for being here um, and for hearing me. Um, I just wanted to, uh, I, I don't know, how many of you remember the uh, shooting, the mass killing on uh, West Virginia Tech uh, at the Hot College last year. Virginia Tech. Well, um, Virginia, I'm sorry, Virginia Tech, okay, last year. And how many people got killed uh, uh, at that time? Well, right on the wake of that, uh, about a week later, there was uh, um, an incident in the uh, Greece schools. How many of you remember that? It was about a week later after the shootings that there was a student that came forward and threatened to kill all the blacks in the schools. And he had it on his website, on his on MySpace, that he was going to bring guns and kill all the black students in the school. And um, when that took place, um, the media, um, I, I'm, first of all, what I want to say is that the school did not notify any of the parents. The way the parents found out was that the kids text and call their parents even though they were told not to use their cell phones in school. That's how parents were notified. Um, uh, on that, uh, a number of uh, media was called to do a press conference. However, none of the parents were called um, to let them know what really happened. During that press conference, and I was the only parent at that time that made it in that press conference, um, I heard of, of, of what took place and that this young man's house was raided and several guns were confiscated from his house. Now this young man at, at the same time was taken to the prison, uh, not 
to prison, to the hospital and put in the mental ward, but they say once they finished evaluating him, he was free to go. That was said in a press conference. Now, this is a week after the massacre in Virginia Tech. There was not much coverage on that. How do I know? I was there. I saw the news. I was interviewed right after that um, press conference. When I saw the news, I saw a Caucasian mother and her Caucasian daughter talking about the incident. Now, there are a number of African American students in that school and parents. You couldn't find not one to put on television to ask, how did your child feel in the wake of what just happened in West Virginia? How did your child feel? It got to the place where the kids were so terrified, kids were crying at school and begging their parents to come pick them up. And nothing was said in the media about that. That was reality. That was reality to those youth. They felt terror. And nothing was said in the media about that. Now you can say that you were not able to locate anyone. I was there. I was spoken to. I was not put in the media. It was an excerpt put in the media. And not that I want to be in the media, but my point is there were enough parents at that school for someone to ask them what is going on and how do you feel. And not only that, in the media, this young man, his picture was never put on the news. Not one time. He was free to go. And his, and his picture was never put in the media. Now, I'm just saying that this is just something to look at because I'm glad that this dialogue is happening because that's something that happened in the past. But going forward, I think that in all fairness, we can say that the news coverage can be a little bit more, um, you know, um, fair and balanced. Thank you. Last comment from our community. I was going to try to sit, but when I came back in the auditorium, this young man was speaking. And he was speaking of something that I know a lot about. I am a retired school uh, teacher. Uh, right now I'm subbing administratively in, um, in all of the schools. Yesterday I was at Franklin, and I had the opportunity to be the principal of Franklin, Bioscience. And I've never been so appalled in my life at the language that the teachers were using toward the students. Now you wonder why our young people are angry. They're treated like animals. They have these ISS rooms and they just throw a bunch of kids in there. And no one has any work for them. And so I went in and I immediately started to talk to the young ladies. They were swearing. They were all over the place. And I said, what are you doing? The boys would call each other niggers. And I said, you call yourself a nigger? Yeah, that's what the white people call me. I said, well, look, I am a black woman, and no one defines me except me. And then they kind of got a little quiet. So to make a long story short, all of what's been said here today, it starts in the home. That's right. It starts with parents being parents, rearing their children, taking them places, exposing them to something. Right. It's not your fault. It's not our fault. And another thing is that the little ones, I go to the elementary schools, and they are kicking, they are running. One little boy ran all the way down the street, uh, and they had to go and get him. Pulled his shirt off in the snow. And the mother came, and she says, well, I don't want to give him that medication. People that don't have knowledge have nowhere to go. Knowledge is powerful. If you explain <coughs> to parents, your child needs medication in order to focus, and then they get the support they need, this will happen, and we'll start to see some change. Okay, so just, you know, everything is, is, society has broken down. We know that. And now I feel so good about telling the kids, you know, look, you have a black president. What do you think you would think of what you're doing now? Oh, oh, that's, that's okay. You know, they just, they don't get it. It's got to be gone over and over and over. And there is a lot of television. There's a lot of video games. There's a lot of violence that the kids are, these are just like babysitters for them. So when they come out into me, what do they have? All they have is what they're exposed to. 
So it's our job. We've got to, if we're young people having kids, they got to get somebody to help them to raise these kids and to teach them and to show them what to do. So I thank you all for coming and just take everything with you and just start, you know, in small groups, going different places, getting young people. The young man that was speaking that was trying to get questions answered. Young people will get it if you do it with them long enough. I, I'm a witness. Okay, so thank you for coming. God bless you. All right, thank you. Very much. I'd like to say, uh, I'd like to comment when she said, uh, knowledge is power. And I believe that the majority of these people, or the majority of the people in here would agree with me. Knowledge is also dangerous, so I uh, keep that in mind too. Not only is knowledge uh, powerful, knowledge can be dangerous. I really want everyone to have the opportunity to, to at least give a closing statement. Uh, a brief, brief closing statement, is that fine? I just need one person to say they want to go get something to eat or drink. Can I? All right, good. All right, here we go. This has been a wonderful experience and I share all the concerns and, and statements that were made here tonight. And I want to close by saying uh, two things. To my good colleague from uh, Gannett, uh, I share the same concerns that you share, but there are powerful economic forces out in this country that will do anything. So please don't blame the victims. And the victims have enough, and they've done wrong. But there are some powerful forces that will do anything. And let me give you a quick example of that. OK. But I'll say this, and then I'll shut up. Abe Lincoln once said that you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And I think what we witness here tonight are people who are analytical, they have a mind of their own, they read, they research, and we need thousands of more like you to help turn our country around. I'll be brief. I just want to thank everybody for coming and for uh, making comments and asking questions. And, uh, you know, just this actually came out of our first meeting um, with uh, the organizers for tonight, and that was just that. I think forming editorial boards on a lot of different topics with a lot of different people is the best thing you can do to get relevant. So I know that's something that you know we've done in the past, but we need to resume that practice where we are. And I, hope, I encourage others to do the same because it is about reporting on the community. So. Okay. I'll be brief too. Uh, thank you very much for coming. I guess my only regret tonight is there aren't more of you and there aren't more of us up here because I think first-hand communication like this is extremely important and hopefully we can take it little by little and this will grow. So thank you for coming. I'd like to say uh, thank you very much for uh, having me, having us uh, here. And, and this dialogue was, was very good. Um, and although I think the panel, we probably talked very little, um, but you know what's important, I think, was really us being able to hear from the community and hear the voices of the community on the issues. You know, and I'll be the first to admit that within our community, I'm talking about the African American community, we have some issues. There are some things that need fixing. You know, there, there's some dirty laundry. There's some things that we need to take responsibility for. And certainly from a media point of view, it's not our um, necessarily our obligation to try to fix those things. But as media, we do have an obligation to at least present the issues and put them on the table and frame the discussion so that these things are being brought to the public light. And you know what? That will help to eliminate some of the racial pro. If a, look here, if a police officer knows that if I um, profile this young black uh, man, that, that my, my picture might be in the news the next day, then he may think twice about doing that. Now, um, and, and I know that there's some issues between, about police and community relations. Those issues are real, and, and even talking, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cut it short. <laughs> All right. Um, Nonetheless, just thank, thank you very much. And I think that this discussion was very, very positive and profitable. Thank you. 
Um, thank you for having me. I enjoy being, he being here and hearing the dialogue from the community. And I just want to share something from a favorite book of mine that says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he gets older, he shall not depart from it. So the children truly are our future. We need to make sure that the images that we put out there to our children are authentic, are positive, are respectful, so, so that those are the things that they will emulate and that they um, will, will be more positive forces in our community. Uh, I echo again, I echo um, everyone on the panelists tonight who always thank, thank you, Anti-Racism Movement, for, for hosting this event. Howard, it was a wonderful thing you've done. And everyone else, I appreciate this opportunity and the community for coming out. I want to thank you personally. I've took a lot of notes tonight. Um, all the questions you asked were not answered. Um, but you gave a lot of ideas to us um, and things that we have to work on. So I hope we continue to have these forums, keep continuing to come back out, bring someone else with you when you come back out, and um, we'll keep on moving. Yes, sir. yes, indeed. I want to say thank you very much at once, there, because everybody really said it. But the bottom line is continue to get people involved. The more people in the community that's involved, the more that overall media will listen to you and will have to listen to you because you keep knocking on the door someone's going to answer that door eventually thank you uh similarly i'd love to say uh thanks for having us um it's been a great discussion and again you know it's, change can be difficult change can be challenging um and change can come in large steps like an election of a new president and it can come in small incremental steps like meetings like this, but every part of change is important to move forward, and I think this was a good example of it locally. Thank you again. This has been uh, eye-opening. Um, the pledge I'll make is um, we will discuss everything that we talked about tonight in our editorial meetings tomorrow. Um, we will form an advisory board. We'll get to work on that tomorrow. Next time we have a meeting, I will bring more of my staff to be with us on that evening. So that's not just us. And I hope that we can keep this dialogue going soon. I hope to talk to some folks tomorrow because I don't. I think the one thing we don't have is time. We need to get going on this. We need to have whether we want to say it's access or whatever that might be. I'm not going to hide behind an economic issue. Everyone's in an economy crunch. You guys are all in your, your homes and what have you. Uh, business is, is tight. But we've never hidden behind lack of coverage because we don't have enough money to go out and cover that story. If it's important enough for, for coverage, we will put the effort, the resources into it. And I pledge that and commit that to you tonight. Uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks for uh, allowing uh, me to be on the panel. Uh, thanks to Aram, thanks to all of you and all of your great comments. Um, I hope people leave here tonight with some serious stuff to think about. Uh, just listening to all this stuff has been really, um, uh, you know, uh, a learning experience for me too. Um, I also would just like to say, I'd like to, to have people consider where their media comes from and who makes their media. And I, I, I challenge you to become the media. Don't let other people write your news, you write your news. And utilize the media if you can. Um, thanks again. To echo what everyone else has said, uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you for taking some time out of your days and nights to, uh, to, to pay attention to what is clearly a very important issue. Um, I'll say that, you know, I think that it, everyone on this panel will agree that we have a moral, uh, ethical, and journalistic uh, responsibility to, uh, to pay attention to this issue of uh, institutional racism because um, those are the good reasons to pay attention to it, but there's even an economic reason. Uh, if, if we're all in this together, and if we reflect the community, and the, commu the community will watch us more, it makes sense. Um, I think that we should all take a, you know, pat ourselves on the back too, because I think um, this is a very important first step towards proving Attorney General Eric Holder wrong, that there aren't cowards in Rochester when it comes to talking about race. Yeah. Okay. Um, the first thing, well, I'm back to my script. But it's one thing that's not on the script that I, I, I have to do. It's, it's a lot of what I uh, perceive as being distinguished people in here. And I really want to 
you know, give everyone a special thank you. But it's one that I definitely have to. This young lady's been fighting a good fight for our people for at least 20 years. But I, I definitely have to give a, a special thank you to uh, Dr. Juanita Pitts for, for, for making it here. Thank you. We appreciate you. We would like to thank, thank you all again for coming out and supporting this historic event. We are proud to report to you that prior to this forum, we received a commitment from each of the panelists that they and or their representatives will reconvene with ARM within no later than 30 days from the day for the purpose of engaging in a collective, collaborative, critique, and analysis of this evening's event, and then to decide collectively next steps in an ongoing process aimed at reducing the historically negative impact and effects of individual and institutionalized racism locally and nationally. We ask that you and or your organizations also engage in your critiques and analysis, and that if you have real concrete ideas regarding possible next steps, that you please email those to arm, and when we meet, we will take any realistic, concrete ideas to the table on your behalf and insist that they be given serious consideration. I will continue to co coordinate the ongoing process, and with your permission, we will be your advocate at the table, just as you have supported us this evening. We ask that you will please join us in the cafeteria at this time for socializing, which is also a very critical and important part of relationship building. Thank you.